afternoon it's Pamela from Yorkshire in the north of England sorry I didn't get on yesterday but I had another busy day um, I had to go uh, for my chiropody appointment and with fitting a walk um, and Nick's car was in for its MOT and service so felt like we were waiting all day for, him to ring for us to go pick it up so Yesterday was a bit of a washout in the end, although we did have a nice walk. Uh, we went to Oakwell Hall, which used to be on, on the doorstep of where uh, I used to live. It's where I was brought up, not at Oakwell Hall <laughs> nearby. Uh, so it was sort of a bit of a playground for me when I was a young girl. Um, we used to go with friends. I'd uh, go uh, with my mum and dad. My dad would take me there for a walk. It was, you know, a lovely place to go. Um, you can go inside it. I don't know if it was open yesterday, but you can go around. Its big connection is with Charlotte Bronte, who was one of the Bronte sisters from Aworth. Um, and she was friends with the um, uh, one of the women that lived there. I can't think of her name just at the minute, but... Um, uh, there's a lot of connections with the Brontes in Burstall, so um, uh, it's uh, it's not surprising really. But uh, yeah, um, uh, we had a good day apart from the waiting around, which stopped me doing a video. Anyway, we're back now. Talking of walking, by the way, it's going very well. Um, if you remember, I said I was going to walk at least a kilometre a day in February. Um, First reason is to raise money for Dementia UK, but the the nice um, byproduct of that was that um, it would get me back walking, because I do I am a sort of person who needs motivation. So if I have the option of just sitting at home, I'll just sit at home. So I uh, it's got me up and going, and I think well I feel sure I will carry on after we've finished on the 29th, which is two days time. Uh, so far I've done well over, um, well in miles it's well over 30 miles walking so that's pretty good isn't it, um, it's over 50 kilometres uh, in modern parlance, um, today's is the biggest one I've done in this month, um, I did 5.19 five kilometres this morning I've, it's a new walk, well, say a path if it's an old walk, but I continued on after the canal, uh, just a little stretch of it, and went up a lane that I've not been on before, um, and came out on the main road back down to our village, and it's given me the longest walk I've done this month. It's not the longest walk I've done in this last year, but it's the, it's the longest one this month. And that goes to show, because at the beginning of the month, I really struggled to do, um, well, I, I did the kilometre okay, but to do much more, I struggled with. And um, I'm now doing regularly, you know, three or four kilometre kilometre walks and then this one today 5.19 which I did work it out when I got back but it's something like 3.2 miles which is pretty good I will go back to counting in miles by the way when I when I finished after Thursday but it was a one kilometre channel challenge so I've been counting in kilometres um so yeah I'm, I'm really chuffed with that um so uh all's well there only thing is you get all too sweaty <laughs> so i'm ready for a bath now but anyway i'm going to do all this first um now um i finally finished the phoenix oh my word have i made a meal out of this thing i'm still not happy with how it is i can't believe that i'm not happy because the author of the pattern is uh the lady that does um, DIY fluffies and she did the Mammy Garuma Made Easy book which is one of my favourite books. Uh, her full name is Mariska Voss Volman. She's, she's very very good but I, her pattern I bought on Etsy, when I bought this by the way it was £4.11, I think I got a discount on Etsy and I, I used a 2.5mm up before I forget to tell you I, I, I used that throughout that's because the yarn I started with was slightly thinner than I was used to so I um, I went with a 2.5mm hook um, it's, that's, that is the 
the finished item there. Uh, it's called Kiki the Phoenix. And then this is the front image of Kiki the Phoenix, that one. And I've got a back shot as well. Did I get to it? Can't believe it's been so long. I just don't be interested in it. It's it's just not not a feel to me at all. So and that's the back view. So I've um anyway, I I've just gave myself a talkie talk weekend and even Nick said to me, Come on, get it done now and I'm out of way and then you can, you know, go on to stuff that you really want to do. I mean I can't really because I've got a couple of things I've promised, but um that's the idea. Peel them off. I've got them all next to me, all the ones I have to do, and the pile is going down, which is brilliant. So anyway, this is this is Kiki the Phoenix. So I did change the wings slightly. I was never happy with the wings being so small. I'll show you this again. So I've extended them by a, a one row. So I think it's one row, it might even be two rows. No, one row. Um, so I did the colourway different. I've started with the yellow, which it does on there, but then it doesn't add, adds another uh, orange in between, but I finished on orange instead um, with the red. And the tail, still not entirely happy. I still think it could have been done different. I've got too many gaps in my, in my tail. Um, than it shows on the picture but I've I, like I say I'm through with it I'm really through with it I was happy until the the feet and that the feet aren't difficult but I just got irritated by them <laughs> you know like we do sometimes and when I was looking at this pattern at the beginning I knew I didn't like how the colour changes went to put the little v's in I'm going to just try and show you close up I thought that looked a bit scruffy you know, too many holes around where you change the colour. So I didn't like the look of them. So I used a method that she used on the owl, which I've done uh, myself. Uh, one, of, one of the ones that everybody liked actually was the owl. I did mine in multicolour. Well, this is multicolour, but I did mine in a lot, a lot of multicolours. But she just used a, a, did a V in the fabric to make feather patterns on the front. So I thought, right, well, I'll just do that on this one because I really thought that looks a bit scruffy how that was. So I've just done, and it's still not right because I've, I've not counted enough properly. So I've ended up with two narrow spots at either side. But I think it's, I think it's acceptable. Um, it, um, it's no worse than what it looked like on the actual pattern anyway, the way she did it. I don't know why I don't like it, but it's not not me. But like like Nick said to me, it's a mythical creature, so it's it's not like it's you know you've got anything to go by. So uh, it's all made up anyway. So anyway, so that's finished. Like I say, two point five millimeter hook. The yarns I used. I'm gonna look it up in my book because I wrote them down last night for this one. Well, right, I put them down, but it's whether I've brought them down before I speak to you. That's the thing. So yeah, I did the orange, like I say, it's a DK, but it, it is on the thin side of uh, what the others are. So James Thievrette, 100% pure cotton, and that one is the colour IC14, which is Jaffa. So that's that one. Then I used, um, oh, the red is James C, but I've not got much of this left. I've used it for a few projects. So that's the James C Brett, 100% uh, pure cotton, and that's in the colour IC12 in red. And that is what the label looks like for that one. Yep. And then for the yellow, I used the Signet 100% cotton in Dandelion. Now I have to com confess, I may have called this James C. Brett when I've previously told you about it, and I may have said it was the colour Daffodil, but I have since looked, well, I looked it up last night, and it is definitely Signet 100% cotton in Dandelion. So 
apologies if I've ever said it incorrectly. So that's that one. Um, I might need my book again in a minute. Now, I've, I have done a frog, but obviously I can't show you that until uh, Thursday. So I've just got a well i've got three birds to show you so i just did one I've, I've, i was rooting out more scraps that i had actually and i've uh, used up some more now these are a mixture uh, that one i know was stylecraft special dk and i think the color sage but not 100 percent sure that one is um uh, airfield bonus dk that came from the coronation blanket but i can't remember what color that is either and the one at the bottom was a Woolcraft Fashion DK, uh, very budget yarn that one, but okay, so it's fine for using. Uh, but again, don't know the actual colour. Um, and the beak and the feet are in the um, uh, Sardar Snuggler like I've used for the other ones. Six millimetre eyes, so that's another bird done. And I quite like the look of that one actually. Then I've got out the trusty Japanese sock yarn, which is why I sent the first stamp email to Cassandra and also later sent some to um, Caroline but I can't actually remember if I sent them this colourway uh, because um, I have had so many colourways um, but the, the, you can't trust the ball band on this by the way it may not be the actual one and it's written in Japanese anyway but it was an 100 gram ball and it's that colourway so I've, I've I can't remember if I've used this for anything else or whether this is the first time out of this colourway but anyway it's I've done a bird in it now absolutely love it except for the band it's got round its head which I think is making it look angry but it, it's so cute as it's so small the rate it's definitely like four ply by the way is this yarn because it's come out so much smaller I think it's fine for a giveaway item, but I had some lovely comments on Instagram when I put it on. So one, Kerry said that the, it's got big eyebrows like they've all got these days. Uh, Liana said it looks like a Frida Kahlo. Totally get that as well. And then Sally says it's got a, it looks like it's got a nat or red band. And I agree with all three of those. They are all right. That's what it looks like. So... I love the Frida Kahlo idea though, don't you? <laughs> anyway, so I love I love Instagram as well. I mean, I was using Instagram way before I even dreamed of having a YouTube channel, channel and I just think it's great. I mean, obviously, I've got a lot more people uh, as friends now because it was just people I knew mainly before that. Uh, but it's great that people, you know, and I, I don't say them with other people. So you love to see them and it gives you inspiration. It's all good. So that's that one. Again, six millimetre eyes and the same yarn. Um, so they are snuggly for the, uh, the beak and the feet. So, and then I've just finished another one this morning. Now, these are going to look uh, more coordinated, the next ones I do. <clears throat> I've sorted out some more yarn. A lot of it is small amounts I had left from major projects. Um, and I thought, oh, what am I hanging on to this for? Because it won't actually do a great big project so i figured this one oh by the way i'm going to call it this one because like i said these might go to friends these uh this one i'm calling chocolate orange warbler so <laughs> my little birdie so i've done him a little sprig out of his head again and for this one i use i've got enough of this left to do another project but this is the serda soft fun uh denim um and it's by scapius and i did my cat in this when i was trying to do myself a ginger cat crochet mascot i'll just tell you exactly what color it is because i haven't got the board then but i've got it in my book it's lovely yarn to use but like i said this is very much like the serda uh, stories so if it's if it's easier for you to get you know get that uh so it's the color 519 in orange anyway so back to back to looking at him and the brown bit this is all i've got left by the way and this was one of the balls that cassandra sent to me uh and you know how i love to use my balls that will go for a proper scrappy one by the way it won't go to waste 
um, and this one was uh, Obi Rainbow Cotton 86 and it's um, in the colour 07 and it's like a, a dark brown. Now I've used that one because I find that this 86, having tried it, is on the thicker side of DK. So, and I thought because the scapies is that sort of look, I thought, right, I'll, I'll mix them two together and it should come out proportionally good. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, like I said, they, they may go because they're more coordinated, they may go for friends. Uh, but yeah, the oh, and again, six millimeter eyes on the beak. I did, I, I pulled pull through from doing the wings on, I pulled through some of the orange to do the um feet and the uh, beak i just used it because i didn't want to use the same color of brown i used uh, an all over cotton uh in dark brown uh i can't remember the actual name of it but it's a scrap i had left and it's pretty good so yes yeah, so that's that one done so i love him so he's a chocolate orange um i think that's it for those um I will be back on definitely on Thursday. Uh, I've got an appointment in Leeds tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll have time anyway, even if I've got something to show you. Oh, by the way, I should have told you that, shouldn't I? All those birds were done in a 2.75 up. Sorry about that, just remembered. Um, I'm going to say as well, for the Phoenix, I tried all sorts of things to try and do a different feather. So I did this one was one that I tried myself to make a bigger one and it were too, it was misshapen, I didn't like it. So then I tried a proper feather pattern which I got off of YouTube. If I can find it again, I'll, I'll link it below. It's a good pattern for the feather, but it would have been too big for my uh, phoenix. I was going to do the other two colours going down it, but I think that would have been too big for my phoenix. But it's a nice pattern, I'll uh, see if I can find it again and I'll link it for you below. Um, so yeah, like I say, I'm at, I'm at appointment in Leeds tomorrow, uh, so probably won't be, won't be on tomorrow. And then, uh, so I'll be here Thursday with a frog pattern. And um, Friday, I intend to put out a video about for the last month of Biocore by Crook uh, challenge that I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to detail in that. Um, you know, when I want you to get your submissions in, how I want you to get your submissions in, and um, hopefully as well that I'll, I can give a prize uh, as well. So um, I'll, um, I'll, it won't be anything fancy by the way, it'll be just a voucher, uh, but I'll give details hopefully on Friday for that. So that'll be the 1st of March and we'll have just about a month to get the submissions in. Uh, so I think that'll be okay. I think that's it then. Don't think I've got anything else to show you for now. Uh, so I shall um, uh, just wish you well, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you. So this is Oakwell and the people who lived here were friends with one of the Brontes. And uh, this was sort of my playground when I was a child. Because this is the village where I grew up. It's really, really pretty. I'm going to take some photographs and I'll do a little montage later. <laughs>